This is a build of an Apex long range Evo frame. It's a seven inch frame and it's got these cross members that to add a lot of stiffness. They are very hard to fit though. Uh, there's, I've decided to go with a Speedy B F405 stack there, mainly because it's such a good price and it's 55 amp ESCs. They're Zing 2604 motors and I've chosen 1350 kV because I'm going 6S. You can see here how tight that stack is in the frame. And I think it's down to the, uh, the frame's quite flattened. The O3 unit fits nicely at the back. They provide screws and an insulating shim underneath so the stack is not electrically connected. They also supply these skid plates for the arms, which are molded and nylon, very good. Unfortunately, because of the front braces, if you use them, which I am, you can't fit these uh, skids because they just don't fit. This is a problem. They also supply a TPU insert to the front frame to provide uh, some vibration insulation to the O3 camera. I'm using a Vifly Lost Model Alarm and a Flywoo Goku Nano V3 Compass and GPS unit. And as you can see here, it's tiny. I was really wondering how well this picked up uh, satellites. Turns out it picks them up wonderfully. I'm literally, in a few seconds, I'm picking up 10 to 15 satellites and in flight I'm getting 28 plus. And this is the final layout, all set up. I'm bringing the power out the front. The motor wires are very, very tight at the back. They're just long enough to reach. So this is my uh, moderately good soldering. And I've got the capacitor at the front. And what I've done is the ESC is flipped the other way round, but the, uh, the CPU board at the front is pointing correctly. So this means that uh, they actually supply a cable that's long enough to do that which is great and there's the uh, final layout again oh yeah with covers and everything on I'm pretty, I've since moved that power cable to the middle and I've got crossfire at the back there's two little holes which you can use a couple of zip ties miniature zip ties to hold your crossfire antenna and uh, this is it it's looking quite neat as you can see, I've put the compass on the cross frame and that's kept it away from magnetic influences, but it's not straightforward. I've had to make some changes in the coding. Time for its maiden flight. I'd already taken a couple of hovers just to make sure that everything was working right. I did not lock down the white balance. So you can see that color change there. Something to do in future, put it on my little checklist. So I'm just getting a feel for how the how the uh, quadcopter flies. And as you can see there in the sun, there is still a little bit of pop in the shot. You could always get rid of that by cropping in just a tiny bit. But this is more about just making sure that the quad flies reliably and feels decent and it's not bad there's a little bit of vibration in some of the shots still I think that's down to tuning of the quad rather than vibration in the, in the camera itself and uh, getting a bit more confident here feeling it out all in all this was done on a 1300 6s just a small battery at first I was just testing at this point Later on, I've built myself a 6S 4,500 milliamp hour battery using lithium ions. And it's 4,500 rather than 5,000 because these batteries can take 35 amp draw, which is perfect for a quad. And there we are, first flight over. And this is a hover test. Basically what you're doing is finding out the throttle setting that the quad will hover at with the uh, lithium ion battery in. And that's you set in the rescue function in beta flight to allow for a smoother return to home. 
unfortunately I'd mucked up the settings and was unable to set this in the field via the SpeedyB app. I turned off the MSP on the uh, connection there. So the subsequent return to homes were a bit bumpy, but I'll show you them anyway. And these are the uh, two rescue attempts that I tested. First time I hit it, it zoomed up and immediately seemed to be going away from me. I literally turned away from me and started flying off that direction. So I lost my bottle and it back into control for myself. So I recomposed myself. I thought, right, let's point it towards, towards myself and set the rescue. Now rescue mode, mode takes the highest level you've flown at, adds 10 meters, and that's what it goes to. And you can see it turned away from me at first. And you can see because the hover's not set right, you get this sort of jerkiness as it's trying to get a level. But it is coming back to me. You can see the distance is now down to eight, seven, six. It's so it's within five meters. And you can see the uh, altitude's dropping now. Now it's two meters away, two, three. So it's it's not a precision landing. It's basically get it back to you and drop it at your feet. So here it's coming down. And that was a good landing. So I tried again. Here we go, rescue again. This is the second time. So this time it didn't go up quite so high because I hadn't flown so high. And you can see I'm at the trees on the furthest left of the field here and it flies way off. But look at the compass point. It's pointing in the wrong direction for most of the time. And this is because I think the compass is at an angle on the crossbar. So it's not, the compass is actually hindering the return to home at the moment. So I'm working on making changes to the compass setting. But still, it came back and landed. I do trust it now. That's two times it's just worked. I like that. I need to work on that. There's a little bubble in the screen, so I either need to create some softer TPU mounts for the uh, camera. No, why am I losing signal? How can I be losing signal? That's mad. This is crossfire. And everything's going well. That is weird that I've lost that lost signal there. But it is crossfire in the horizontal mode and I do not like horizontal mode. I think I may just change this over to a diversity ELRS and put one horizontal, one vertical. That will give me more coverage, won't it? Let's just fly over here. And what I'm doing is just... I want to see how long this battery lasts. 2.7 a cell. It's nice and quiet, this part, I must admit. Right, now we're on nulls. If I'm going to get a, a signal loss, it will be now. And that home arrow is just totally wrong. I think the compass still needs work on. <laughs> or I need to mount the compass straight ahead, but I don't want to do that. It's in a beautiful position where it is at the moment. So I'm just going to fly around, just enjoy this sort of low level, easy flying. Circle the horse. Hello, oh, horse. I must say, it's a very nice, smooth flyer. Just 
just want to get rid of those little bubbles here. It sometimes has. Let's fly by me, see if I can hear the beeps. There's me. Sure, I'll hear it. In fact, it's a loud buzzer. Oh, nice doctor. Not allowed that one. It's uh, seven inch. Now, minutes 29 seconds not bad and the results we got for total flight time of the four flights I did 38 seconds test hover 446 was the first return to home test 1 minute 30 for the second and the actual long flight test was 18 minutes 29 seconds so that gives us a total flight time of 25 minutes and 17 seconds I'm okay with that. Changes I've made since then. I've gone to the ELRS as I said I would. And that's a Radio Master Diversity. I've also gone to Buy Blades. So hopefully that will add a little, little bit more efficiency. And this is the battery. It's a 4,500 milliamp hour 6S lithium ion. And the cells are 21 700s.